Jim Seamus of the Santa Cruz Sentinel here with you. And guess what? Those Cardinals of Santa Cruz High are still playing some football. Pretty awesome for the school. They celebrate their second CCS title last weekend, beating Leland uh, 20 to 7, I believe. And they're headed to a NorCal bowl game. So big stuff this weekend. It's supposed to rain. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, let's just jump right into it because I think I already have. Uh, they take on Salesian, uh, and that game will be Saturday at 6 p.m. at Memorial Field in Santa Cruz. This is no pushover, guys. This is going to be. This is going to have to be another upset. So, Salesian is ranked number 227 in the state. Santa Cruz checks in at number 435. Now, this is just like last year's bowl game with Aptos and McClymans. Um, McClymans was considerably smaller. Granted, they supposedly, you know, they, they do draw from out, outside their school range. But Salesian has an enrollment of 395. So they only have 23 kids on a team, but the ones they do have are pretty good. And, um, yeah, Chad Nightingale, their coach, the pride coach, Said they're not like, you know, I was asking if they're big and athletic. He said no, but they're, you know, they executed. Well, there's some big athletic kids on this team. Don't be fooled. So the Cardinals have their work cut out for them in the NorCal 6A Regional Bowl game. The winner advances to the state championship. Uh, I don't know if I have an opponent uh, next on who they'd face next in front of me. But if Santa Cruz does win this game, they will host the state championship at Cabrillo College the following week. So this thing is huge on multiple counts. The fact that Santa Cruz has never been here before um, and the fact that they could host a state championship the following week if they win this. Obviously, both teams are taking it one week at a time. This is the biggest game of the season right now. So Salesian 11-2 on the year. Santa Cruz is 10-3. Salesian stormed through the... Um, North Coast Section Division 7 bracket to win their title. Uh, their title, They have won, uh, let's see here, they've won six NCS championships to go along with 15 league titles in Coach uh, Chad Nightingale's uh, 24 seasons as head coach. So hopefully those numbers are spot on. I think they are. But anyway, Salesian was the top seed in NCS, and they beat Stellar Prep, and they beat St. Helena, and then they beat Ferndale. And each one of those games, they scored 49 or more points. Uh, they did give up, uh, you know, they, they won 49-14 over St. Helena. But this team puts points on the board. In fact, in their first game, yeah, they, they earned a running clock in, in uh, their first game against Stellar Prep, I believe. So, um, Santa Cruz. They, uh, after starting the season one and two, ran it, got on a run. They lost their finale to Watsonville, which probably was a blessing in disguise. Uh, in terms of making them the number one seed in Division Five, and then they go, uh, then they knock off Mount, uh, excuse me, Pacific Grove, Santa Teresa, and Leland on successive weeks as the number two seed. There they are. They have them. All right, jumping back to the Pride, they are the Tri Champion of the Tri County Athletic League in the Rock Division. How cool is that? The Rock Division co-champs with El Cerrito and J.F. Kennedy. Not of Fremont, J.F. Kennedy of Richmond. And that is where Salesian hails from. Uh, again, like I mentioned, Chad Nightingale has, um, has won 15 league titles and six NCS championships, three runner-up finishes in his 14 seasons as head coach. So 23 players on this roster, a good 23, conditioned, you know, much like Santa Cruz, a small roster. Uh, just so you know, the alma, I have a bunch of notes here. The alma mater of Javid Best and Jabari Bird of the NBA and Javid Best for the NFL. Um, both played at Cal. Anyway, so little known fact, Cliff Clavin facts. <clears throat> All right, so they lost their opener in the season, Salesian did, to Bradshaw Christian. I just want to give you some common, not common opponents, but just an idea of how this team kind of is, aside from rankings. Um, and then they won eight straight before losing their regular season finality to John F. Kennedy of Richmond. And then they've uh, they won three more in the playoffs. Like I said, very convincing. 
They're studs. Um, and, and just Chad Nightingale, one of the things he preaches is the same thing the Cardinals are preaching is staying in the moment. He's, you know, he told uh, local media, one of the things I'm very proud of these kids is they really stay in the moment. They focus on the opponent in the hand. That was after they won their Division Seven championship. They were tied in that game, 21 all, and then scored 22 points in the fourth quarter. Like I said, incredibly explosive. The Pride are led by two-way linemen. Tackle Princeton Toki. He's 5'11". He's 330 pounds. He's headed to UC Davis on a scholarship. So, and in that championship, they kind of ran behind him. Nightingale said that he's the biggest... Uh, the biggest lineman on the team, sure, pound-wise, but I, I saw plenty of video on these guys, and they're decent-sized. Um, not oversized, but they're a good-sized good, good -sized team. Junior wide receiver and defensive back, anyway, he had a kickoff return for uh, Dan Dominic Fontanella. He had a t kickoff return for a touchdown. Do not kick to this guy, number three. <laughs> he has kickoff returns for touchdowns in multiple games in the postseason alone. Senior running back, Justin Gutierrez. He's part of their bread, and their butter is, uh, let's see here, Kareem Sullivan. So Justin Gutierrez and Kareem Sullivan are their two running backs. They run a, a lot of pro set formations. Uh, they'll, they'll have two tight end sets, um, trip receivers, or two in the backfield. So they run a lot of pro formations. They do it all with the quarterback, <clears throat> who's kind of a stud for them. Let me find his name here for you. That's the problem with having too many notes. Um, Don, Ronald Robertson. Sorry about the pause there. Ronald Robertson threw for 41 touchdowns as a junior. This year, about 35 more. His go-to guy, or one of them, I mean, he'll connect with Elijah Sanchez. Excuse me. <coughs> Satcher, their tight end. But Kalen Chang is their stud receiver. He's 5'11", 155 pounds. Skinny little guy, but fast. He's a track guy. He had two TDs last week in the championship and, and a pick six. So the guy is very athletic. Uh, Kalen Chang, wide receiver and defensive back for them. Okay, we mentioned our running backs, Justin Gutierrez and Kareem Sullivan. Kareem Sullivan checks in at 5'8", 175 pounds. Gutierrez, 5'11", 190. So, not huge, but decent and athletic. Athletic enough. All right. So, for Santa Cruz, they've had a different guy leading them each, each postseason game. Uh, but all season has been the same. Play enough defense, score more than the opponent. And, uh, you know, let Dylan Dan quarterback Dylan Danner kind of run crazy and air it out to any of his four or five or six receivers because they are very deep at receiver and, conversely, defensive back on, uh, on their defensive secondary. Uh, but they have a stud, a sophomore stud, uh, Quentin Brown, the running back. He ran for 180-something yards last week, and I expect more of this, you know. He's rushed for 100-plus yards in every playoff game. He entered last week with 1,400 yards. I don't even know what his touchdown total is. <clears throat> Stats aren't readily available, but the guy is a stud. So Dylan Danner, in the previous week, their quarterback, senior quarterback, passed for four touchdowns. So they have plenty of studs, you know, whether it be base and you know, And they're not even utilized a ton because they run a lot. So, but base and Chope and uh, Makai Norman, you know, these are some guys that are Henry Campion. Receiver, defensive back. They kind of spread the ball around pretty good, you know, passing-wise. And then let uh, Quentin Brown do what he's doing, you know. So, just so you know that, um, I'm going to throw this ball away here. The, C, uh, the Cardinals are massive underdogs in this game. Like I said, they're not only ranked 200 spots lower in the state poll by maxpreps.com. They are also predicted to lose this game. By calpreps.com. 35 to 14. So what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Because the Cardinals were favored or predicted to lose last week against Leland. And look what happened there. But they got to play a complete game again. So 
Uh, Caleb Womack, another stud receiver. He's a sophomore. Uh, they have they have a number of, of weapons on the Cardinals. Uh, they've been getting done. Kobe Bailey, defensive back. I mean, they have a lot of guys that, like I said, they they spread spread the wealth on offense. So it should be a really good game. The thing is, it could be raining. So to see how much this team passes will be interesting. Side note: the Dad's Club tournament runs this week, Thursday through Saturday. The championship was slated for Saturday at 6 p.m. Well, that's when the Cardinals football team plays. So that championship is now at 3 p.m. for basketball at the Civic Auditorium. And then the Cardinals will host, again, Salesian at 6 p.m. At Memorial Field in Santa Cruz, the winner moves on to the 6A state championship. All right. I hope that helped out a little bit in terms of giving you some some names. Uh, Go out there, stay warm, bring an umbrella, and cheer your loudest. All right, thanks so much.